would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's so he says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be a part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy merch. Buy merch indeed. The child shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear <coughs> listener. This stream is brought to you by the big homie, the mighty, mighty Seven Dusted. Whose birthday is today? It's also the day, uh, it's his 33rd anniversary of the United States serving his country. Having a said long that, time. having said that, he said, This is now. the final song tonight oh, in no. the Southeast. What? Yeah, we had seven songs tonight. Are you sure? Yeah, see? Well, shit. Okay, all right, continue. <laughs> Dark New Day Taking Me Alive. Final song tonight. Did you get that message to skip it ahead 35 seconds? Yeah. In the Southeast, where I was playing in the live club circuit at the time, this was a super group having members of Stuck Mojo, Double Drive, Virgos Merlet, Merlot, and Seven Dust. These guys were stars in the Florida, Georgia rock scene um, of the late 90s, early 2000s. They stole the show from any other bands they shared the stage with, including Chevelle, Seether, Crossfade, Disturbed, etc. I'll be the judge yeah. of that! Their final single was huge, and this song was included in the House of Wax soundtrack. Unfortunately, the label Warner Brothers decided to wait an insane amount of time before releasing their second record. Eight of years! Of course. So, of course, all the members went off to do other projects. Oh, that really sucks. Okay. These record labels, man. I these know. Are, How could the, they these, do that? These are the same people that are blocking, that block all of our, our videos when we're actually like promoting their band for I free. Know. I know. <laughs> Think about it, people. <laughs> you show your age. It's so strange. These, these, these record labels are absolutely ridiculous. All right. Let's go. Let's, I, I'm very excited to hear this band, Dark New Day. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see this band, Dark New Day, taking me alive. Let's do it. I know there's ambient noise. I'm not skipping because I want the ambient, ambient noise.
metal so much, dude. <laughs> that is how I got yeah, into metal. Definitely a fan. That, that is how I got into metal, and that is how I am getting out. Is new freaking metal. Thank you very, very much. Very much. Very much. Uh, I really like that song. I liked. Uh, see, this one had the traditional like low end shit that I love. Like, Me too. I always did some of my stuff. All my shit is low end. Well, uh, the little soft song I played wasn't low end. It started out like a B or C or something like that. But all my shit is low end. Seven no set. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, this is another one where the person's like struggling. I don't know if it's like substance abuse or just like self improvement type of thing. This so, to me was self improvement. Yeah, it's like it's 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 again another thing where you gotta have to look yourself in the face and be like, you yeah. know what? Sometimes you're the bad guy. Yeah. Sometimes you're the villain. Um, yep. You desecrate your temple with anger. A hollow body fueled by hate. Hollow. I feel no better. Anger. Don't look for answers. Hatred. Blown away. There was never a reason why. It's sick either way, sick either way. It's sick either way you look at it. So take what you want and leave a hole inside. Take everything you need to keep you satisfied. Break everything you see, then try to hide. Take it all, but you're never taking me alive. This is kind of like uh, the inversion of, like, what, song three, where he said the American Head Charge one, where it's like, don't let anybody in your heart and you won't be hurt mm. again. Um, so it looks like he's, like, looking in the mirror talking to himself. At the beginning when he says you desecrate your temple with anger. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I thought he was talking to somebody else, though. He's saying you desecrate your temple with anger, a hollow body fueled by hate, hollow. I feel no better. Anger. Don't. So it sounds like he, it, maybe it's like people that are talking together. They both have a problem with the same person, maybe, or the same situation. Because he said it's sick either way. So I, I thought he was talking about the whatever it was that was fueling their frustration and their anger. Seven. Hear me! Who's he talking to in your mind? In your mind, Seven. I'm looking at my text now. Um, okay, so what do you think he's saying? You desecrate your temple with anger. Well, I think that he's talking to somebody else, but he's also talking to himself. I think it's both. Because he, cause he says, I feel no better. So that to me sounds like he's talking to somebody else. But by the end of the song, he's saying... He says, now you've used my weakness against me, a Trojan horse already through the gate, which I think obviously is his hate and anger, anger issues. That's the Trojan horse. What did you, what did you think the Trojan horse was, horse was? I think the person using his weakness against him, he's saying is the Trojan horse because presumably they got close to you in order for you to do that. Right. So in order for somebody to successfully use your weakness against you, they have to know you to some degree to know what the weaknesses are. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the Trojan example, it was, hey, uh, this is a gift for you. So we're going to lower our defenses and let you inside. Mm -hmm. And then once we lower our defenses and let you decide, then you went off and attacked us. Y yeah. So what he's saying, it looks like is, uh, you know, we were friends. I lowered my defenses. I let you inside, let you know what my weaknesses were. And now you're using them against me. So oh, that yeah, person okay. I see, I can see that. is the Trojan horse yep. in that, in that, um, in that aspect. Well, oh, okay. That's an interesting way of looking at somebody like substance abuse or, um, whatever, whatever the the abuse is or whatever the thing is is like a person taking taking it out on their own body mm -hmm. that's an interesting way of looking at it like and then it becomes like a weird kind of cyclical thing like do you resent your own body and so you're taking the drugs or is it do you resent yourself and do you hate yourself for not being able to overcome whatever this pathology is? And so now you're going to take the drugs, knowing that it's destroying you as a form of punishment. Oh, my gosh. So you're angry at yourself or you're full of hatred or whatever. Yeah. Um, for that for that reason. Um, hmm. That that's a pretty crazy way of looking at it. It's like you're you're doing this thing because you're so full of hate and anger and you're the last person you're taking it out on because you're at the point where you can't really, you can't hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. um, man. Um, so th that's, that's somebody who's just like bent on self-destruction because 
you know, a hollow body fueled by heat. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think you're right. Like, he's talking to this other guy, and, and he's like, yo, it's sick the way you, you know. And then he's saying, like, now you've used my weakness against me, a Trojan horde already through the game. Weakness, I spiral down into the excuses, search for excuses. It's time to take an honest look inside. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so to your point, like, you're talking to somebody else and saying, um, you can look at it as if I'm attacking you, or you can look, or you're just making another excuse. Right. Because, unfortunately, when it comes to substance abuse, like, th those folks have, they've got a very, I don't know if they're doing it on purpose, but they create this sort of dynamic where it's impossible to call them on their shit. Because the minute you say anything negative pertinent to the substance, they'll say, oh, here you go again, you're throwing the shit in my face. So it's like, well, yeah. no, you're saying that the drug is not really a problem. You're saying, oh, it's yeah. no big deal. I can stop whenever it's not a problem. And then when you say, okay, then why were you? Why why did your five year old daughter find you passed out then? Mm -hmm. So you're coming up with this bullshit lie and excuse that you're doing fine. So then, in order to combat that, the person goes, "What are you talking about? We just saw you. We just had to scrape you." Up. Then it's, "Oh, you're throwing this shit in my face. Oh, you're you're insulting me." You're blah, blah, blah. so it's like, okay, so then I, so then it comes out to I can never criticize you for for this specific issue because the next time you say, "Hey, I can get over. It's not that big of a deal." I can't talk about the last thirty ways you've destroyed everybody's life around you with your substance abuse issue. So you've created this heuristic where nobody can yeah. ever criticize you for that. It's, but yeah. I I. I'm not convinced that those people are sitting on their bed thinking that through. I just think, you know, like Peterson says, people get... They're just reacting. You get possessed by a certain kind of mindset. Mm -hmm. And I think once you get possessed by that mindset, it, the thing kind of has a, a life of its own and it kind of begins to direct you, mm. um, which yep. opens up a whole different other ball of wax. You know, when people talk about like, what is actual demon possession? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Because a lot of us think about, and the reason I'm bringing that up is because another word for alcohol or whatever is spirits. Yeah. Because the idea was when you ingest this thing, something else is taking you over. So hence the term spirits. Like they're, you're ingesting something that's... Yeah, I've heard that before, yeah. But like if, if you think about consciousness as you're in the fifth dimension, you know, like Karis one was saying, when you say rock star in your head... You're hearing without ears and seeing without eyes. And that's where the real you resides. And so you're just using this body as the sort of controls, for this avatar in the fourth mm -hmm. dimension that you're operating in the fifth dimension. And so if you were just to say, yeah, demon possession is what happens when a malevolent consciousness in the fifth dimension takes over the controls of that of that avatar so that changes the understanding because now you're not looking for the eyes rolling in the back of the head and levitating and all this other weird shit mm -hmm. you're looking for if i uh didn't like you and i wanted your character to lose in a video game what would i do sabotage i would just sabotage everything yeah. and just completely destroy it and all your teammates are like what the fuck are you doing so if you look at demon possession as simply somebody taking the controller, boy, that is interesting. Then all the 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 weird, you know, Rosemary's Baby stuff, all the woo 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 silliness, yeah. like goes out and like you look at it and say, this is a guy who it, everything is getting destroyed around him, and wow, that's such an interesting way of looking at it. He wants to stop and can't. Yeah. So what's going on there? So, um. You know, Jung talks about this being possessed by the anima. You know, yeah. You know, like people, they do though. They get possessed by a certain kind of, in my view, like dark, malevolent mm -hmm. uh, intelligence that then creates all of these templates where you can insulate yourself for your addiction. So I don't think these people are like really thinking about, but the pattern is the same all the time. It's they're hedging around their addiction so that you can never criticize their addiction mm -hmm. and you're just supposed to go along with it. And what happens is in extremists is on the one side, you'll have somebody that says, okay, I'm going along with that game. Like the enabling, you know, matriarch figure like, okay, I'll go along with it and enable your bullshit. 
And then on the on the other side, you have people that go, nope, see ya. Or you're out the team, or you're out of the band, or I'm getting a divorce, or whatever. And look, you're always going to look like the sympathetic figure. They kicked you out of the band. You know, oh, she left you. So you're always going to look like the sympathetic figure. Everybody left me when I was at my lowest. You know, I, I can't tell me how many can't tell you how many people told me that. And like when I first heard that, I'd be like, "Damn, man, what the hell? What a cold world!" But then after a while, I mean, really, it was after I experienced down there. <laughs> you know, like when I'm like, "Yeah, people left you at your lowest, but you, you, you manufactured that lowest, and then you demanded everybody to stay in the shit with you." Mm -hmm. And because they refuse to stay in the shit with you, now they're the bad guys. Mm -hmm. Well, no, you're the bad guy for dragging everybody down. And I'm not saying, like, you can't have a bad day. I'm not saying you can't have a bad life. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you can't have a bad couple of years. What I'm saying is, at some level inside, we are making those decisions. Right. And so, like, all of us have to reconcile ourselves to the things that we've seen, the things that we've exposed ourselves to. Right. <sighs> We, we all have to take accountability from that for that on the on the inside and I think if you can if you can look inside of yourself and take responsibility for the things that for the way that you have participated in your own misery and the misery around you then you're in good shape if you refuse to take that that good hard look in the mirror then you're going to alienate everybody around you so to me, those are kind of like the themes. Like I, if, if I look at all the songs, like the chord that, that goes through all of them is, is kind of like facing yourself, taking accountability for yourself and, you know, that kind of thing. So yeah. what, what were your thoughts? Um, well, I focused more on the, you know, like what he was saying about anger and hate and like the word like hollow um, just the way that he explained that first part, just because I, like, I, I was always taught, like, don't let the sun go down on your anger and stuff like that. So, um, I took that super literally, like I tried to get everything squared by nighttime, but that doesn't necessarily like work that way. I, basically he's trying to communicate, clear this stuff up as, as soon as you can. Cause obviously if right before the sunset, you had this big massive fight about something and unbelievable and then the sunset it's not like you're supposed to be like okay i forgive you we're good let right. me just go on um but just so so i had that as a principle but i didn't really understand like well what's so bad about hate and what's so bad about anger and so i kind of would just probably if i had an issue with that i just kind of pushed it to the side and never really never really dealt with it but when like i went through my divorce and i started feeling like real like anger and hate toward people and there was some like there was some people that I kind of just let it sit there because I felt like they kind of deserved it. Um, but then it like was eating me inside. Like it was when he says like the hollow and then he, he said, um, take what you want and leave a hole inside. Like it hate and anger. It'll steal everything from you until you're just like the shell of a person. And there's not really a whole lot of stuff to be happy about anymore. It's a very, very horrible heart. So like, it said it in the Bible, like, don't let the sun go down on your anger. And I did it, you know, to my knowledge, the best that I could. But then when I hit a point where I actively was choosing to, like, hold on to stuff, like, it was it was a pretty negative experience. So that's kind of – and he and he called it a temple, too. He said, you desecrate your temple with anger. And um, so I took that as, like, the person, like, themselves. Like, you've destroyed yourself because of that anger. Um, anger and bitterness. It'll, it'll wreck everything. Yeah, we were talking about it, like, two songs back where, um, you know, I was talking about, you know, that, that soldiers are also prone to addiction mm. because of their very, they're very closely constituted, like, artists. Right, with the... In the right. sense that they've the got feelings this first. burning desire for something inside of them to be expressed. Yeah. And, and then you get addicted to, you know, because combat is a chemical. Yep. So what Seven was saying is, and the only reason I'm sharing this is because I was green-lighted to. Um, thematically, for Seven, the themes were relative to addiction and, I, um, and, and things of that nature. But check this out. My addiction to isolation. 
and reconciling the paradox of absolutely adoring my family and struggling with an addiction to the action and isolation, you know, that comes with, yep. uh, that comes with, I mean, we've seen this, like we, we just got done watching this show where this dude is, uh, he's taking part in some pretty unhealthy stuff that's, that's cost people literally cost yep. people their lives and is tearing apart his family. Yep. And throughout the entire show, he's like, everything I do, he does. It's like a ritual at the end of every season. He has this conversation, everything I do, I do it for you guys. And then in the last, right, like right. second to last episode, he goes, everything I do. And the wife goes, here we go. And he goes, I did it for me. Yeah. And then he says, you know, basically that it made him feel alive. Yeah. And that's a, that's an extremely difficult thing for people outside of that situation to understand. Mm -hmm. It's extremely, and, and you see it in, in all, I see it in all great people, you know, like, like I said, you know, I was just talking, I don't know if it was seven or M diff, uh, pretty sure that I was talking yesterday about how you saved me, you know, cause I just, I just knew it was a non-starter, you know, like if we would have met each other in high school, maybe it'd have been different. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I mean, I don't know, but my, my feelings on it, or you mean what would have happened? What would have happened? Oh like, I yeah. Think I, I don't would know. Have had the ability to say, come on, I'm just going to be, you know, blah, blah, blah for a couple of years, you know, whatever. But, but I just knew that I couldn't do, you were just not going to accept that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Like you were not going to accept, Hey, I, it's crazy. Cause if you would have asked me, yeah. I would have said, I'm, you know, we'll, we'll make it work, blah, blah, blah. But you had a clearer assessment of how oh, I... Yeah, yeah, I wasn't even going to... No, I knew it wasn't. I knew it Because even when we were friends, you were having a hard time, especially the last one. The last one, you were like, don't go, blah, blah, blah. I didn't even know what you were... It's going to be dangerous, yeah. blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's, just, it's just so bad. And I, I dudes are so superstitious. Like, like, this is like, I'm like, I had in my head, like, this is my last trip, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, the kids were telling me not to go. You were telling me not to go. I get jammed up at the embassy. There's just so much shit that was happening. I was like, oh, man, this is, uh, this is. But at the same time, though, you know, you, you just made it impossible. It was, it was, you were, you were, you were them. So, you know, it was good. But a lot of guys, the situation's a little bit different with everybody. That's so crazy that you say that. The, you know everybody's situation is uh, uh, different, but that's a that's a real that's a real self aware thing to realize like the the endorphin rush, the action, and then the isolation that you get like how much you enjoy that, but love your family at the same time. And the only way they they could ever know is if they could like be inside of us and understand what's happened. They go, oh, I'm completely loved. I'm completely adored. It's just. You know, some people just made up a certain way and, you know, some, some shit's hard to let go and everybody's situation is different. Like if you get exposed to really extreme shit or you're doing really extreme shit, sometimes like you've had your fill, you know, if you're on the mm -hmm. periphery, but you're still like in the excitement, it's like everybody's different. Everybody's circumstance is just different. But, and I think really deep down, just like with any addiction or any like major life change, if I really look deep down. That's why I always, that's why, like, I remember, like, when we were first married, you'd always ask me, like, if something would happen on the news or whatever, you'd be like, oh, I'm like, hey, are you sure? Are you mm -hmm. sure? Are you sure? But when I really, really think about it, I ultimately, it was a self-motivated decision. Especially considering where the kids were at, you know, like. Yeah, they needed you. It was just such an entirely different circumstance than I was in and than other people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, like, that's the reason that it stuck and that it took was that, like, it was internally I was looking at my life and being like, yo, like, this is the dream job or whatever. Like, you know, literally get a call anytime. <laughs> and, like, I was gone. Like, you and, like I, <laughs> you were there. You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, but I didn't know. But, but like, it, it's, it was a dream job. But at the same time, like, I, I just remember being on the plane and I just remember looking at everybody and just thinking to myself, like, yo. If I'm good, if I'm, if, if I'm, if I can actually like get home, like I'm, I'm, I'm done. So, and I had no idea how I was going to do it. I had no idea how, 
you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, thank God that, you know, whatever, but yeah, man. Yeah, it, it was deep, 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 deep. Uh, thank you for sharing that seven. Um, that was really, 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 um, um, you've done a lot of thinking, man. And that's the thing I appreciate about the homie. He's done a bunch of thinking and, and he's got a, you got a really 2020 view of yourself internally as much as I've seen with anybody. And that, that's, uh, that's saying a lot. There you go. I really like this song. Uh, 9.7 for me. Yeah. Nah, 9.8 for me. Uh, holy smoke. There we go. Uh, Good message. Another one in the basket. Look at yourself in the mirror, I guess. And yeah. accept whatever you see. Accept means, hey, nobody's perfect. Everybody sucks. So accept that about yourself. And then the things that you want to change... Start um, working on them. Start, get your friends and start working and start talking. And take baby steps, dear listener. The biggest step, though, is self-realization. That's what we're about here. Uh, the fam is doing good. New fam is doing good. Uh, shout out to 7 Dusted for the stream. Guys, we are, we are um, uh, coming right back. As you guys heard, we've got yeah, some. Yeah, next week there's a lot. We've got some <laughs> unsigned bands well, that, are, that, that we're about to show off to you guys. We've got some yep. um, Alliance streams that are coming up back to back to back. Um, so next week is going to be a banger for you guys. We've got a lot of content coming for you guys. Shout out to 7 Dusted on his freaking birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Laying down the hammer with some really heavy topics on his uh, on his birthday. But hey, that's what we're about. Uh, Pony, yep, you're going to text me. I was going to tell you to text me. So <laughs> text me. I'll, I'll be on the phone checking out for you. Having said that, dear listener, love your neighbor. Take care of each other. Finn out. Sorry, out. Go.